Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Today, we are on the road, so to speak, in a different kind of studio. We are at the Fleming Museum of Art. For over 80 years, the museum on the campus of the University of Vermont has been a cultural treasure prized by locals and visitors. This fall, the Fleming presents two exhibitions about the intersection of activism and art. One is be Strong and Do Not Betray Your Soul, selections from the Lightwork Collection. It is curated or guest curated by Four Freedoms, a platform for civic engagement, discourse, and direct action for artists in the United States. Also on display is Resist, Insist, Persist. This exhibition is curated by UVM students and is taken from the Fleming Museum's permanent collection. It demonstrates how empowerment and expression act as a counterpunch to adversity and hardship. And to talk about art and activism today is the curator of the Fleming Museum, Andrea Rosen. It's, thank you for having us. Always great to have you here. So I'd first like to start about Four Freedoms and what this organization is. I thought it was so interesting to see that it's spelled F-O-R, mm -hmm. Freedoms, but it very much is inspired by the four F O U R <laughs> freedoms um, from FDR, and uh, many people know that through the uh, Norman Rockwell paintings. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Four Freedoms, who you collaborated with. Right, so they were founded in 2016, uh, after the election, uh, by two artists, Hank Willis Thomas and Eric Gottesman, who both have photographs in this show, by the way. Uh, with the idea that um, participation is really one of the most important things in terms of engaging in our process and making a difference and that artists have a critical role to play mm -hmm. in furthering such conversations. So they do a wide range of things, including exhibitions, town halls, even billboards, although they can't do that here in right. Vermont, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so they worked with an organization called Lightwork, a, a agency that, a organization run by artists for artists working in photography. They provide residencies. So everything in this show was selected by the Four Freedoms artists, but then um, came from the Lightwork collection. They're all artists who've had residencies at Lightwork, including the two artists who founded Four Freedoms. Right, so they're, they're photographs. So, um, of course, Four Freedoms did the curation. Mm -hmm. So how do you collaborate and what is your role? I mean, you know, that, that sounds good. Have somebody else do your, <laughs> do your job, but. We do a little bit of work too. Um, so uh, the Four Freedoms artists worked with Lightwork to do the show. It was originally up there at, at Lightwork. And I learned about it and thought that could be great for our space and for this semester when we're looking at art and activism. So I asked Lightwork. And, uh, and where are they? Sorry, because there's also right. the Lightworks thing in Burlington, but this is oh, not right. in the state. No, they're uh, in Syracuse, New York. Right. Um, they're housed on the university campus sort of in partnership with them. Um, so we asked Lightwork if we could take the show after them, and they agreed. So, you know, we, when we take a traveling show, we still want to adapt it for our space and for our audience. So we get to make our own design decisions, our own decisions about the text. So I wrote the text in collaboration with an intern and a fellow staff member. Okay, so what will people see here? It looks like it's mainly photographs. It's very intimate, it's portraits, yes. really. Yes, yeah, I think more than anything, it's, it's just a great exploration of what contemporary photographers are mm. up to. There's 47 different artists in this show, um, most of them working in the last uh, few decades. And so, as you said, a lot of them are portraits. I think a lot of them are focused on themes of empathy, themes of the juxtaposition of strength and vulnerability, um, themes about the relationship between the subject and the photographer and whether an image is staged or occurring naturally and mm -hmm. when can you tell and when can't you? That's always sort of a thought-provoking juxtaposition that sometimes appears in these images. Right. Is, is, there, is there one that really strikes you, that, that moved you mm -hmm. when you were going through this? Yeah, so one of my personal favorites is by Hank Willis Thomas, one of the Four Freedoms founders. It's an image called Branded, from a series called Branded that he's been working on for almost two decades. It's a close-up torso um, of a black man with a scar on his chest that looks like the Nike swoop. Right. So uh, what Thomas does is combine images of slavery with contemporary advertising. And so that double sense of the meaning branded. And I'd known his work for years and loved his work for years, but it struck me as I was working on this show, there was an article in the Times about um, black workers at Adidas and other sportswear companies that often use black superstars as their spokes agents, but are not treating their black employees particularly well where they're underrepresented and often mistreated by fellow 
white employees. So it was striking that he's been working on the series for almost 20 years and the themes are very relevant today. Right. Many depths, many levels in all of these pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could come in and it's a beautiful photography exhibit. Exactly. But they make you think a little bit. Yes. A, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, what about showing photography? There's a lot of white space. Is that something mm -hmm. that's, that's more challenging than paintings? or? It was a little easier, to be oh, okay. honest. Well, you know, it's sort of, um, I guess, easier than three-dimensional work. We have to design special cases. We kind of just get to plop these frame things on the wall. But um, it was fun. Oftentimes, when we do an exhibition, we're telling a story. But this one was really more about um, interesting juxtapositions of images showing very different things. We didn't want to group things by theme. We wanted to leave a more open exploration. So it was really about playing with what images look best with what yeah. and what created, what made each image sing, what created the most interesting juxtapositions. It was really fun to hang. Oh, I bet, I bet. And kind of walking through each one influences the other a little yes. bit as you walk through. Um, so how, do you, how can you make sure as you're doing this that the politics, or maybe this is an artistic question, mm -hmm. politics doesn't overtake, especially mm -hmm. in these very political times, mm -hmm. doesn't kind of overtake the art and the art piece that yeah. you also want to present. Right, right. I think that speaks to what we've been talking about. This is uh, also a, a exhibition about photography, um, images that are uh, meditative, beautiful, things that will grab you whether or not, the, regardless of the political message, I, I think most of them aren't trying to hit you over the head. Right. Um, and I think, again, a lot of it is really more about empathy, about learning about someone else's experience in the world mm -hmm. and having this image that really makes you, puts you into that mindset of someone else's experience. Right. Yeah. Thoughtful. Um, so the conversation of art versus politics is nothing new for the Fleming. Mm -hmm. um, it's been around. So I'd like you to talk about this other exhibit that is in a, a separate gallery, Resist, Insist, and Persist, that was actually curated by UVM students. That's right. So we do uh, student curated shows periodically. This one was curated by an art history class last fall, taught by art history professor Kelly Helmstetler Didio. Um, and she chose the theme, at first art and protest, and then as she worked with students, they reworked to art and activism. It's sort of an interesting mm -hmm. discussion what those different terms mean. Um, so that's work almost all drawn from the Fleming's collection, mainly prints going back to the 18th century up to contemporary, and one work not in our collection that's actually by another UVM professor, Mildred Beltre. Um, the students group the works by theme, of race, gender, the state, and class. Um, so maybe sort of in contrast to uh, this Be Strong show, the works in that are maybe a bit more explicitly messaging a, a political topic in protest of some issue, and sometimes not. Some of those images are also provocative and ambiguous in, in, in more open-ended ways. Right, it was an amazing collection. I mean, you have things from Picasso mm -hmm. and uh, that are they're very moving, so they're not necessarily from here. They're from all over, from a long um, time range. Mm -hmm. When did political art really begin? I mean, that's kind of an interesting question in right. and of itself. Right, I think it probably goes back as old as history, but printmaking, the advent of printmaking is really what makes this watershed moment because once art can be mass produced cheaply, it's easier to spread a political message. Um, so that you know, probably goes back to 15th or 16th century. So, well, your students clearly did a fabulous job. It is a beautiful show, but that um, the Boston Globe also said it was one of the best must-see museum exhibits in New England. So congratulations Thank to you. you and to your students. Um, so how, how are the students reacting to this? I mean, this, is this time ripe for this kind of exhibit? Yeah, I mean, we are a museum on the campus of the university, and that is really why not the only reason, but a big reason why it, the time felt right. You know, we want to respond to the conversations that our students and faculty and staff are having. These are the conversations they're having. Right. So, you know, one that really moved me was Claire Layton's bread line. Just, just gorgeous mm -hmm. as a piece of art, mm -hmm. but also so moving. And, and it makes you really think about a political situation. Right, I love talking with students about that work because it's a great example of an artist using form to convey the message. It has this, these stark diagonal lines that 
divide the image into dark and light segments and um, the way that the line of people waiting for bread are sort of uh, made anonymous and, and dehumanized and then with these uh, stark skyscrapers raising the background that this is a time of great building of the New York City skyline at a time when people are, are struggling to feed themselves. I think that's a contrast she, she made very purposely in the way she constructed that image. Wow. Well, it's beautiful. And just to get, you recently also spoke at Middlebury College about collaboration, which is clearly something that you do so well. Anything more you want to say about? Sure. So the theme of that is, that obviously, I work with students and faculty a lot, with guest curators, artists, and of course, my fellow staff members. And the point is, sometimes collaboration is hard, but it, it ultimately makes your product better. It makes my thinking better. It makes me think about things in a way I didn't expect. Um, it makes a better exhibition for our audiences when we're taking in multiple points of view and, and pushing past our comfort zone of how we present things. So uh, it's come to be a really important part of my work. Okay, fantastic. So um, and anybody can come to see this. It's very moving shows, both of them very thought-provoking and beautiful. Thank you so much, Andrea, for joining us today and for hosting us here at the museum. The uh, 2019 fall exhibitions at the Fleming Museum run until December 13th. You can check out the Fleming's website for hours and admission and to learn about other activities and educational events happening this fall at the museum. So thank you again, Andrea wonderful curation here at the Fleming Museum. Thank you, Fran. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.